Welcome along to another video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll look at the steps for preparing for migration to SharePoint Foundation 2010. I need to start with a disclaimer and that is, is that the information provided is done so here as is. There is no warranty or guarantees provided and by using the information listed in this video you acknowledge that there are risks with implementing anything on production systems. You therefore agree to indemnify the producer and creator of this video from any or all liability. Please also note that this process is neither Microsoft supported or approved. So we'll start out this process with a standard SharePoint version 3 website. In this case I have uh, Company Web installed on Small Business Server 2008. The only thing that is different uh, in this instance is that I have uploaded a single document to the shared documents area so again we can make sure that the documents and the look and feel converts when we get further down the track but apart from that uh, this is a standard SharePoint version 3 out of the box. So the first thing that I probably need to do is I need to run uh, the SharePoint Foundation 2010 pre-upgraded check. So this will make sure that uh, my version 3 is suitable for an upgrade. To do this I need to go out to the command prompt and I need to do that as an administrator. So I right mouse click on the icon, select run as administrator, select the UAC control and at the DOS prompt I want to go to program files common files Microsoft shared web server extensions 12 and then to the bin directory. Once I'm in this directory I need to run an STS ADM minus O pre upgrade check. Okay so I'll just hit enter on this and what this will do is uh, this will go through and run a check of the suitability of my SharePoint version 3 uh, to be upgraded to SharePoint Foundation 2010. So in this case what you'll notice that uh, it's looking through um, an XML file, it's now doing some uh, checking for me and what it's doing in fact is writing this information to a uh, HTML file which I can view um, at a later stage. So again it has a number of checks that it needs to run through and if it uh, has any problems you'll notice that it will say fail but in this case we have uh, only recorded informational results as well as passes so in this stage at uh, this stage of the game it's all looking quite good so I'll just take a moment or two and allow that to uh, that process to complete so once our report has completed you'll see that in this case the operation has completed successfully will also be noted that uh, the results have been written to a HTML file basically in the logs directory of SharePoint and then what it will do for you it will try and display that file automatically so in this case here's the results of our pre-upgrade check it is very important for you to go through all these the items that are listed here and make sure there's no major um, problems or failures that need to be taken care of and again you'll find a huge amount of very helpful information provided in this report so in this case you can see there are no major failings or warnings um, gives us a, a significant amount of information about um, how our setup is configured so again we need to uh, make sure that we've recorded all that information so with that being all good I will close that report and what we will do is now close the command prompt. Now even though it's mentioned in the report what you probably need to do is to uh, determine what databases you're using for your SharePoint version 3 installation. Uh, in this case we go into the central administration for SharePoint, we go into application management 
and we go into an option called Content Databases under the SharePoint Web Application Management area. So in this area you'll see that in this case we have a content DB called ShareWebDB. So this is the database on our system into which all the information from our SharePoint version 3 is saved. So what we'll do is we'll actually go out and have a look at that in the file system so I will explore that. I know that because this is a version of a uh, small business server and it's using the embedded edition of SQL I know that the location of these databases on the system is under the Windows directory under the SYS MSI uh, under SS EE under MS SQL.2005 MS SQL and then in the data directory so here you'll see um, under this directory you'll see our two files one called sharewebdb this is the database and here we have the log file which is important and has to be taken along with it as well so in this case you'll notice that it's about 16.5 megabytes so um, we need to take a, need to be aware of this and it's always a good idea to have multiple backups when you go to do any migration so in this case what we are going to do is we're going to do a file level backup of these databases so what we're going to do is we're going to go out to uh, our services so we go to administrative tools we go to services we ex accept the UAC that's displayed and in our services if we scroll down we'll notice that there is a service here called Windows internal database so expand that so you can see it so in here scroll down a bit you'll see that there is a service here called Windows internal database Microsoft hash hash SSEE so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to stop this now it's important to realize that SharePoint is may not be the only database that's in use or being used by your SQL server in this case I know that the Windows Update service also uses the Windows internal database so I need to be aware that when I stop the database to do the copy of my SharePoint databases it may affect other applications so I know that's okay okay in this case I'm just going to stop the databases so it's just going to stop the internal database and once that is complete that now means that I can go in back to my file level I can now select these share web DBs I can now copy these and I can move them to another location or I can copy them to another location as a backup so what I'm going to do is I'll just put them into the D drive here just as a, uh, a backup. I'm not going to use these but again this is the first level of backup that you need to make. So I'm just taking a complete database backup. Okay so now you see that I have the two SQL files sharewebdb and sharewebdb underscore log so what I need to do now is go back and start my database server so in this case I'm going to start the Windows internal database okay so this this now means that my company web should function uh, as normal so if I go back into company web and just make sure that I can get to all the different areas So I can get into my calendar and I can see that if I go into my shared documents so I see that my company company web or my SharePoint version 3 is working fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do another style of backup so again what I'm going to do is go out to the command prompt run the command prompt as an administrator again except the UAC and once that's displayed I'm going to go back to program files, I'm going to go back to common files, I'm going to go again to Microsoft Shared, I'm 
going to go to web server extensions I'm going to go to 12 and again back to bin so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a back uh, command level backup so I'm going to go STS ADM minus O backup so that's what I want to uh, the operation I want to run uh, the URL that I want to back up is http colon back forward slash uh, company web I want to send that to D to my D drive and I want to override if the file already exists okay so it's important to note that uh, when you run this command line backup that it will place the SharePoint site into read-only for the duration of the backup so again uh, it's important that you run it when uh, users are not planning to interact with um, SharePoint so again what it's now done the operation has completed successfully we'll now go out and have a look at our D drive and you'll notice that I have a company web dot dat so this is basically a backup of all the data just the data from my SharePoint version 3 site now the other command that I recommend that is worth running as well as another backup is to actually run what's known as an export so that's STS ADM minus O export again uh, specify the URL of HTTP colon your SharePoint site in this case it will be company web um, and again the location that it will be sent to so again I'm going to send it to my D colon and I'm going to call it CW export dot dat and again overwrite anything that may already be there so what this does you'll see that this is a different style of backup this is basically generating uh, going through the site line by line and creating a, uh, a file that will actually allow you to import this into um, another site so the difference is is that when you run the STS ADM minus O backup command basically you only enable you're taking a whole backup of SharePoint and you can only restore this backup over the top of any other site um, that you may that you may want to do a restore of the difference with uh, ex export is what I can actually do is, is I can actually combine the information from this exported data file into another site so I can use it as a combination tool so in this case if we go back to our D drive you'll see that I have my company web but I also have my two CW export files a .dat export and, an ex and this one here which is the majority of the data so what I've done now is I've actually taken three backups prior to uh, commencing my migration I have a database backup so I've copied the databases off I have an STS ADM minus O backup uh, here and then I have an also a minus O export so I've got three different styles of backup so I'm now confident that I can move ahead and if I have any issues I'm able to roll back This information has been brought to you by the CIA Ops SharePoint Operations Guide. It's the most comprehensive guide on how to install, migrate, maintain and use Windows SharePoint. More information can be found at www.wssops.com. Please feel free to contact me with further comments or feedback. My email is director at ciaops.com. Otherwise, please follow along on my blog, supportweb.ciaops.net dot au forward slash blog. Thank you very much for watching.